Welcome back to the simulator. In this video, we're going to cover how to set up the alpha yoke with spad.next. This is also how we're going to get rid of the weird events with Microsoft Flight Sim, the heading uh, extra 10 degrees, all that crap because of the way the buttons show up. When we set it up with spad.next, first got to come in here into uh, Flight Sim and we need to get rid of all of the controls. The default looks like this. And if we go to all assigned, you're gonna see that everything's already pre-assigned. Now we wanna get rid of it. So the first thing you gotta do is you click on each one and you are going to clear them out. And the first one that you clear out, it's going to ask you to create a new profile. So this is the one where I would just uh, change this name to Alpha Flight uh, SPAD Profile. All right, so what you'll have seen by then is once I've cleared everything out, right, we get down and I'm still currently leaving the ailerons uh, and the elevator configured in the sim. We created that other profile, we saved it, so then we come in here uh, this is the example of the last one. I validated it. So these are the only things that I've left, created that profile, apply and say. What you'll see right away is these switches, these toggles aren't a single switch. They put a button on the on and the off. And that's why in Flight Sim, when these things get mapped, they're constantly setting the value. With those switches enabled, if you started adjusting things like heading bug, that was the accelerator. So because that button was being held, it treated it like you were spinning the knob really fast. So your heading bug would move in like 10 degree increment. We're removing that from the sim, making our life a lot easier. Then hence we deleted all the buttons. Plus I like to map all my buttons in spad.next. You could configure one button at a time. I found it a lot easier to go to global settings. And now what we're doing is we're gonna take every single one of these buttons. The Y axis and the X axis are still enabled. I could map to them if I wanted to, the hat switch enabled. I could disable these here so I don't see them. I'm leaving it because at some point I'm gonna play with it. What you're gonna see is that for button number one, I made it a simple push button. So that's the push to talk because I wanna be able to have a button press button released event. Then button number two, which is the little white one here, that's gonna be my autopilot disconnect. Now when I do autopilot disconnect, I like to have a short press, which is the less than a second presses, will disable the autopilot, but I like a long press. So if I hold it for a second, that will disable autopilot and it will disable the yaw damper. So that's nice, you can you know turn off the autopilot, hand fly it longer before you then decide, I'm also gonna take out the yaw dampener. Then you'll see that I went and button three through 12, got three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So all these ones, I have made those simple push buttons as well. Because these trim switches, I want to be able to have repeat events, and you'll see the you'll see the difference when I show you button two for thirteen through all the way to thirty. So thirteen, twenty, twenty-one through thirty. All of these, what I've done is the upside. So in this case, we'll say button thirteen. I've set that to be a switch type. So now I will have on state and off state events, just like on a switch panel. You'll notice that then I took 14 and I disabled it because it, it does me no good with spad.next since I can treat a button as a switch uh, that I don't want to repeat events. I don't want push button. I don't want simple push button. I want it to be a switch, which makes 14 useless because that's the off state. So what I've done is I've disabled it. So it just takes it out of the list and I don't see it. Plus it'll help when we turn on the Lego block in being able to find the buttons and it not getting caught on the bottom side of the switch. I went on all the even ones, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, and 28. 
and we disabled those. So by disabling them, we don't see them up here and the Lego block won't be impacted. And then for now, I've got 31 through 35, which is uh, the starter key switch. So the mag switch, I have those currently set as a switch type. Once you've done this and you click OK, you have to close bad.next and relaunch it. It'll prompt you. So let's go ahead and let's turn on our Lego block. That way, when we press a button, it jumps to it. Because I use the simple button, when I add an event, I have a button pressed and a button released event. That's very helpful, especially because I'm using VJoy for this case. Now we've covered VJoy in another video. I suggest watching it. It's actually pretty cool to be able to tie it into other things. And in this specific case, the reason for doing it was in vPilot, set up my push to talk, but VJoy only lets you bind one button. So if I wanted to use different control surfaces, so I've got my 320 flight stick for stick style, I've got the yoke for yoke style, I don't want to constantly be coming in here and changing it. And you can only bind one. So what I did is I bound it to button 101 of VJoy. And so by doing that, I can map VJoy button 101 multiple times to multiple joysticks. TCA Pilot, it's button one. We're gonna add an event, button pressed, add action, advanced, virtual joystick, VJoy one, and it's gonna be button 101 and it's going to be a press. And that way here, I'm going to have no modifiers. It's not gonna keep sending this event. It sends it once and then what's gonna happen is we're gonna add an event button released. So when we let go of the button, it's going to then release the virtual joystick button. So it works just like a press and hold. So what this does is now I can control my push to talk on VATSIM through multiple controllers by tying the multiple controllers to VJoy. This being a simple button, we only get the ability to add events for button pressed and button released. So when we look at button number two, right, this is set as a push button. So it has more events. There's pressed short, so less than a second, pressed long, greater than one second. You can still do button released events as well. So I could press short and then have something happen when it's released. I could do a press long, have something, and when released, a button release. I just use this mode when I know I'm going to want multiple events. When we look at the trim switches, what we've done here with six and eight is we've set up the elevator trim. So we added an event and we use the button pressed, right? We don't even care about button released. So on button pressed, I'm actually going to check that button eight is equal to one. And this is kind of cool. This mimics what the point of a split trim switch is for. It's so you can't get a stuck trim switch. Both have to be in the up position to trigger the electric trim. And so on the honeycomb, they simulated it by putting the two buttons there. And so what I've done is I've bound the two together. So the condition is you're only going to fire this if the other button is held down. So that's pretty cool. So now if I only move one of those switches, it will not trigger the trim event. I want to send the trim down, so nose down when pushed up. And then this is what's important. You'll see this is now available when you are a simple button. So with it being the simple push button, I can now bring in a button mode. It's going to trigger every 25 milliseconds until it's released. Holding this, it's rapidly sending my trim down and my trim up when I go the other direction. You won't see this button mode if you don't change it into a simple button, right? So if we go back and look at button number two and we look at that button pressed, you'll notice you don't get the ability to repeat events. Let's go to our switches. So now when we look at button 13. Now we've got the ability to set these switched on and switched off. We'll add a switched on event. 
So now we can come in, we could add an event, and we could send a simulation event. This would be for more of the standard uh, units. Or because we're in the Aerosoft CRJ, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change a data value. And we're going to use the LVAR because we have the LVAR bridges installed. Watch those videos. They've been published. Uh, and here we're going to look for, there's our battery master, except what we want is actually, we want our, um, our elect gen. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to map the uh, generators to the alternator button. So I'm going to put a one. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to add a... Uh, another action and again because we can write these data values I don't make these separate ones and add conditions because you are driving the data directly it's not having to send toggles and all that boring stuff so we've got those set for one and now we're gonna add an event switched off add action change data value set zero add action change data value and set zero so now that we've turned that button into a switch, this means that spad.next is only going to send that event when the switch turns on. There is no repeat, and you're no longer going to have those types of held down bugs that people were experiencing with their honeycombs. So there are my generators went off. There are my generators go on. And as you can see, the Lego block is great because whatever we press, it jumps to that switch and changes the focus for us. That pretty much sums up how to set up your Honeycomb Alpha Yoke to configure it with Bad.next or Microsoft Flight Sim. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, hit me up in the Spadnext Discord. Okay, talk to you guys later.